Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. Welcome to episode six of Photo Tip Thursdays. Thank you for sticking around or if you're just joining now for subscribing. Uh, in this episode, I'm gonna be teaching you why it's so important to polarize a car to get rid of reflections and get the awesome skies like we have today. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to put together those polarized shots, similar to a video I uploaded last year on this channel. I'm just gonna walk you through the whole process now. So as you can see, I have my Mini Cooper S here and it has some reflections on the windshield and on the front hood and some reflections down the side. Now, when we use a polarizer, like we talked about in episode one, it only cuts reflections on either the windshield or the side. So we're gonna take two different pictures. Then again, we're gonna use layer masks, similar to last week's video with the headlights. Uh, and I'm also gonna show you a secret, uh, not a secret, but a super quick trick to blend those exposures together almost perfectly in Photoshop without even using layer masks. So right now I'm gonna switch over to that camera, show you a little bit of video of what the polarizer does, and then we're gonna take the two images and hop into Lightroom. So make sure you subscribe, and if you have any questions, let me know. But let me show you with a video clip here what the polarizer does. So as you can see right now, there are uh, some uh, reflections here on the left side of the car. You can see them especially in the window. And when I turn the polarizer, you can see that the reflections disappeared. So you can see as I turn it, there's the reflections and then they disappear. But now on the front, there's reflections. When I turn, they disappear. So we're gonna basically have two different polarizer turn exposures to get this shot. So I'm going to reframe a little bit. I just don't want that power pole in the back of my photo. I'm gonna use live view on my camera. Hopefully you guys can see this to manually focus. So that way I get tack sharp focus. I'm gonna use manual focus on this lens. This is the 24 to 70 Tamron VC lens. Uh, on the Nikon D800 in this episode. And got that. Gonna get my polarizer for the side. And there's my first shot. So I do want this to be a little bit dark and moody. I can bring it up in Photoshop if I want to. But you can see the first exposure there, very clean on the left side of the car. Uh, and then we have the reflection on the windshield. I'm actually gonna move over a little bit more so I don't get any of that power line in my shot. And again, let's check the focus. Okay, zoom out. And here is the same shot, just without the power lines. Okay, so we're using the angles to get rid of distractions in the background. And then I'm going to turn the polarizer to get as few reflections as I can on the front. And now I have two exposures. And then what I'm gonna do is take one more image and I'm actually gonna slow down my shutter speed and this is gonna be for the wheels. So I'm gonna show you how to add another exposure uh, just for that part there. Okay, so this one's a little bit brighter but it has more detail on the wheels and tires. So now we have three different photos. We have the wheels, a little bit brighter. We have the front polarized, we have the side polarized and now we're gonna hop into Photoshop, use layers and layer masks to blend that all together and come up with this really cool image. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Let's hop into Photoshop. All right guys, so now we are in Lightroom and we're gonna put together those three images in Photoshop using blend modes and layer masks. Don't worry, this is actually gonna be a really easy to follow along tutorial. And right now I'm gonna get started by showing you again the three images that we took. So we have the side uh, polarized, so we have no reflection on the door and in the passenger window. Then we have the front polarized, so you can see the giant difference here between the windshield in the windshield polarized one and the side and vice versa on the door. Now there's a giant reflection uh, in this image and there isn't that, so that's kind of what we want to put together. So we want to have no reflections anywhere. And then we have this third exposure. It's kind of like a bonus trick I'm going to show you, which is how to bring the wheels from this image into this uh, without it looking too ridiculous. And the final image is going to look something like this. So you can see that the side has no reflections almost, just got this very soft body line right here uh, from a reflection of a white building. And then we have the front and the side polarized so you can see right through the windows and there's no ridiculous um, uh, reflections. Now, what I did here is very similar to last week's tutorial in terms of the colors. I made the oranges a bit stronger, I darkened the sky, I brought the shadows up and I used dehaze. So you can see the difference is very subtle. The orange is just a little bit brighter. Like I said, the shadows, you can see the rim some more and there's a little bit more clarity in the sky. And I did that using the same exact techniques from last week's video. So if you wanna know those exact steps, check that video out. Now we're gonna select all the images by clicking on the first one, holding shift and clicking on the last image we want and edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. 
Now, while that loads, I want to let you guys know that I want to do my first giveaway. So if this video reaches 100 likes by next week's release, then I will be selecting a random commenter and subscriber to win a polarizer filter from Amazon Basics. So all you have to do is subscribe to the video. So hit the subscribe button below and comment what size polarizer filter you would need. So if you don't know, you can send me a DM on Instagram and I'll even help you find out so you can comment. And then if this video, like I said, is at 100 likes by next week's uh, episode coming out at, on Thursday at 9 a.m., then I'll select a random person buy you a polarizer filter through Amazon and get it shipped to your house. So leave a comment down below letting me know what lens you want it for. Maybe you have an 18 to 55, you already have a polarizer for that, but you want another polarizer for your second lens, just comment that lens's filter thread size. And if it's one of these, I'll send you my personal one. I'll sign it if you want, you probably don't care. Uh, and if I don't have it in stock, then I will buy you one myself and get it shipped to your house. So. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Hopefully you guys smash that like button and I can send a uh, viewer of mine and a subscriber a free polarizer. So now we have the three files in Photoshop and the first thing we're gonna do is name the files. So I'm gonna turn them off, uh, these top two, and then go to the bottom so we can see this is the brighter. So this is gonna be wheels. So double click where it says the title of the file, call that wheels, turned off, go to the second layer. This is the front polarized, so call that front polar and then turn it off and go to the third layer. And this is side polar and we're good. Now what we're going to do is turn on the layers and you can do that by simply clicking uh, on your mouse or your trackpad and then dragging up over the other eye icons. And what we're going to do is align. So go to help, type in align, auto align layers, hit enter. And now what it's going to do is line them up. Now the issue sometimes is that your tripod will move like a tiny, tiny bit and it won't line up perfectly for layer masks. So this is just kind of to help you make sure that the image comes out perfect and you don't get annoyed later on. And as you can see in the corners here, uh, these images, even though you saw they were shot on a tripod, were not perfectly lined up as you can tell here in the edges. So this is three different corners. So this is image one, image two, image three, uh, and now they're perfectly lined up. So we are going to turn off the wheels layer. We don't need to worry about that yet. And we have the side polarized and the front. Now for the side, basically what we want is the uh, front to be polarized, right? And the side as well. So we need to cut a hole like we did in the how to clone a car tutorial using layer masks. Now to get a good preview, what you can do is go from normal blending mode to darken. And as you can see, that pretty much did it. But now the issue is we have this reflection on the side that's coming in from the darker pixels on the bottom. So what you can do is go to front polar, hit the layer mask button, which is right here. It's this little rectangle with a circle in it. Select a black brush. So press B for brush or go here on the left side. And once we have that, we're gonna set the hardness to 0%. So make sure it's at zero. We're gonna set the opacity to around 40. So you can just hit the number four on your keyboard. And we're gonna start brushing black. And as you can see, this reflection is starting to go away. And that's all we're gonna do right here. And if we want, we can make this a little bit stronger. We can go to like 60 or 70%. So I just hit six and seven on my keyboard. And we're just gonna brush on the door to make sure it's all going away thanks to the layer mask. And there we go. So now with the blending mode set to darken and with a layer mask on the middle layer, we can see that we have a perfectly polarized image. So again, here is the front, whoops. Here's the side polarized. And then all we did was add the front. And now you can see the giant difference here in the mini logo, in the hood scoop, in the front, and all that good stuff. So you can see the image really changed and you get a lot more detail and you can see completely through all the windows now. Now, another thing you'll notice is that the ground is changing uh, due to the polarization. And it's totally up to you which ground you want. If you want the ground from the top layer, what you're gonna do is on this layer mask, you're just gonna brush away on the ground and the brighter ground from the top layer will come in. So let's say we wanted that. I'm just gonna do a really rough brush here. And I recommend you take a little bit more time with this, but I don't want you to watch this video forever. And as you can see, now we have the ground from that second layer. So looks pretty good, everything's polarized and we're set. So that is how you put together polarized files. Basically, you have image one, image two, open them as layers in Photoshop, and then set the blend mode to darken. And whatever you don't want from the bottom layer, set a layer mask on that. Now that's pretty much done. And if you care to see how the wheels are done, continue watching here. So we are going to turn on the wheels layer, put it at the very top, hit the layer mask button. 
And what we're going to do is invert this layer mask. So when it's black, that means it doesn't show up. And when it's white, that means it does show up. So I'm going to hit Command I to make it completely black. And now that layer is gone. Now what I'm going to do is change my brush to black or change it to white. Rather, you can see that it's set to white. We're going to zoom into the wheel and I'm going to set my brush opacity to about 20%. Select a smaller brush using the bracket keys, or if you have a Wacom tablet, you can spin on the side. So you can see I can change my brush size. But anyways, we're just going to brush right here. And you can see that the wheel is becoming brighter. Boom, right there. Super easy. Now, since the wheel is going to be really bright, we can't leave the tire too dark. So I'm going to set the opacity to 10% for the tire and bring out just a little bit of detail here. And again, the more you brush on it, the brighter it will become. And that looks pretty good. And again, the tire on the rear, and then 20% and the rim. And the more you zoom in, the more precise you can be. So the better your uh, photo will turn out. And we're good right about there. So now, as you can see, we have the wheels turned on, and the tires are a little bit brighter, and we have the image polarized. So the wheels, I think, are a little bit too bright, actually, for how dim this image looks. Uh, it's got that moody. Um, look to it. So I'm actually going to turn the layer opacity down a little bit. So now the wheels just pop just a tiny, tiny bit so you can see more of the design and the texture. And the last thing we have to do is select the crop tool, hold shift in the corner, select our crop and press enter. So now we've polarized all the images together. We've gotten the wheels to be just a tiny bit brighter. Again, you don't want to overdo it because let's say we hadn't set 100% just looks a little unnatural. We want to keep everything just very subtle. So we're going to lower that and we have everything put together. Now you're done. All you have to do is command shift S, save the file as whatever you want to call it. I usually name it the same file name and then final edit .psd. Save it, open it in Lightroom and export to share on Facebook or Instagram. So that is the tutorial for the easiest way to put together polarized shots. Sometimes you'll get super lucky and you'll just set the blend mode to darken and it will be perfect and you won't have to do layer masks at all. It's kind of rare, so I want to show you both methods in this video. If you have any questions, send me a DM on Instagram at a car photographer. Please be sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well. And again, comment your filter thread size down below, like this video, and if this video gets to 100 likes, I will give away a polarizer filter to a random subscriber. So I hope you guys like that. If you do, let me know, and I'll see you next Thursday at 9 a.m. for yet another tutorial teaching you how to shoot cars. Thanks for watching. Peace.